13.4 Lung Volume Notes. The essential question is, what are the various lung volumes and what factors affect respiration? Respiratory cycle is one respiration, which equals one inhalation or inspiration and one exhalation or one expiration. Uh, in a normal adult, the, the, the normal rate of Respiration is about 12, and it could range from 12 to 20. Obviously, as you get older, that number decreases, and when you are younger, babies and children, it's much higher. Lung volumes are measured using a spirometer, and it is a machine. There are various different kinds. You, uh, the tube is attached to some kind of a, a graduated apparatus that's going to measure volume, and you breathe into it and then it will measure how much air is being put into that machine. The tidal volume is the amount of air that is moved during a normal breathing and it is about 500 milliliters, that's the normal. And on this graph, you can kind of see it's this area right here. That is the amount of air that is moved in and out during a, br a breathing and that's the tidal volume. Inspiratory reserve volume, just like the, uh, the words say, reserve meaning what is remaining after a normal breathing, and then any other additional breath that you can take in, that is your inspiratory reserve volume. So again, here was your tidal volume here in this area here. Then the inspiratory reserve volume is the amount of air that you can force out, force in after your initial intake of air. Expiratory reserve volume is the additional amount of air that can be forced out after the normal expiration of air. Residual volume, residual means what's remained after, so residual volume is the amount of air that is left inside the lungs after you breathe out as much air as possible. It is the amount of air that no matter what you do that cannot be taken out of the lungs. And these, this air, the residual volume is important in keeping the alveoli uh, inflated and so that it, the lungs don't collapse on itself. Dead space volume is not really measured but it is the amount of air that is remains in the conducting tubes, the, uh, uh, the bronchioles, the bronchi and the bronchioles, and it's the air that no matter how much air you take in, it's the air that's remaining in the tubes and it never reaches the alveoli. There are respiratory capacities. The inspirational capacity, it includes the tidal volume and the inspiratory reserve volume. So it is the amount, the total amount of air that can be taken in by the lung is the inspirational capacity. The functional residual capacity is the expiratory reserve volume plus the residual volume. So during a normal breathing, the functional residual capacity is the amount of air that remains in the lungs. Vital capacity is the addition of inspiratory reserve volume the tidal volume, and the expiratory reserve volume. So it is the maximum amount of air that can be breathed in and the maximum air that can be breathed out. All of the air that is moving in and out is the vital capacity. Total lung capacity is the inspiratory reserve volume, the tidal volume, plus the expiratory reserve volume, and the residual volume. It is the all of the volumes added together that equals the total lung capacity. So a summary, the tidal volume is the amount of air that can be moved in and out of the lungs in a normal breathing uh, at, uh, at someone at rest. At that, the inspiratory reserve volume is the amount of air that can be additionally taken in after the initial normal inspiration. Those two volumes together make up the inspiratory capacity. The expiratory 
reserve volume is the amount of air that can be forced out of the lungs after the initial uh, expiration of air in a normal breathing. The, uh, the addition of the expiratory reserve volume and the residual volume. Residual volume is the amount of air that remains in the lungs after the maximum force of air out of the lungs. Those two together make up the functional residual capacity. And that is the volume of air that remains in the lungs during a normal breathing when you breathe out air. If you then add up the tidal volume plus the inspiratory reserve volume and the expiratory reserve volume, those three volumes together makes up the vital capacity. Then addition of the residual volume would make up the total lung capacity. Any activity or actions that can modify the normal respiration is coughing, sneezing, uh, crying, uh, laughing, hiccuping, yawning, any, any expression of emotion can change the rate or depth of respiration. Terminology you need to know, eupnea is normal or uh, quiet breathing. So people with healthy lungs will have eupnea. Apnea is a temporary stoppage of breathing. Dyspnea is painful or labor breathing or difficulty in breathing. And tachypnea is the rapid breathing. The prefix tachy means rapid, nea meaning breathing. Recall from the nervous system that the control center for respiration is in the brain. The medulla oblongata and the pons control the rate and depth of the breathing. The medulla oblongata is the main uh, structure that controls respiration, but then the pons plays a role in the depth, meaning how much air is moved, whereas rate, it means how fast you are breathing. Factors that can affect breathing is the number one factors that cause increase in respiration is increased level of carbon dioxide in the blood. That's going to increase the respiration and it acts directly on the medulla oblongata. Second factor that affects respiration is decrease in oxygen will then increase the respiration rate. There are chemoreceptors all along, especially in the aorta and the carotid artery, that regulates the amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen to keep to regulate respiration. And all of that information is sent to the medulla oblongata. Physical activity that can um, increase uh, respiration is obviously a rise in temperature will cause you to uh, increase in respiration. Exercise, talking, coughing, and emotions could all be factors that can uh, raise or increase respiration. 13.4 notes homework. Number one, what is the formula to calculate the vital lung capacity? Number two, how are vital and total lung capacities different? Number three, what is the number one factor which affects respiration?